Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to be starting episode 19 of If This Canvas Could Talk. And I'm happy that you guys are going to watch us live today. It's just Terry and I. And we're going to start here soon, as soon as I see her on here. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Easter's coming up this weekend. And, oh, it's so exciting. All right, I'm going to have my friend come on. And we will get started. Okay, hang on. I'm trying to find her. There she is. Again, this is If This Canvas Could Talk. Episode 19. And hi, there's hi. Hey, Good morning. Good morning. Oh, oh, hold on. I'm losing my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. that. Hi. Okay, hi, Jody. Hi. Oh, hi, Jody. And there's Art by Faye. Faye Cofield. Hi. Good morning. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, my friend, Terry. Long time no talk. Yeah. Well, we're on episode 19. I can't believe it. It's going so quick. I know. It's been fun. Yeah. I'm fixing my thing so I can see where I am because you know that Instagram, when we when you're on the thing, it, like, shortens you, like, and so we, we were noticing in the first ones, like, <laughs> This is what I look like. <laughs> so I now have you here, and then I have another tablet over here so I can see where I am. I have to back up. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad you can see. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. So, it's so we're, hey, we're we're learning. That's the, that is the whole point of of the, of doing this live is to share with others our journey and how it's going and what we're learning and so it is a learning process even doing the live because there's a there's a lot that goes into it even all the things that you've learned behind the scenes of yeah. even after we get done how you have to try to upload it and then it's just it's so much yeah to make sure you save the video and yeah but read read um do you have the um the statement that you had or no it's on your phone it's on my phone, okay, yeah, so I can't look at it. So we'll, have to we'll post it. it. How about we post it after, but tell them okay. about it. We're excited. Yeah. So uh, we came up with a, kind of a, a mission statement for why we're doing our lives here on Wednesdays and um, for If This Canvas Could Talk and what what our point of doing it is, just to make it clear. So we'll we'll put that in the comments of what our little mission statement is. But... Um, Terry and I worked on it and she ended up finessing it and it's wonderful. Perfect. She's a good writer. She's a really good writer. You're so funny because I did not even know that that was, I, yeah, I don't think I'm a good writer. Yes. I, I mean, maybe after like the 80,000, 80, 80,000th revision, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah. But it takes me a long time to get there. It's not something that just, you know. Yeah. Okay. So if anybody well, out there is struggling with writing anything, like just keep writing. Just I just write everything, 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 and then whittle, 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 whittle. Yeah. Down yeah. to the last thing. But yeah, it turned out really cute. And basically, the gist of what we are doing. Somebody waved to us. I just saw that was crazy. That like was that's the new thing. Or was that? that was oh, me. how do you wave? What? <laughs> Waving oh, is a thing. I don't yeah. even know. Okay, I have to be able to back up more because my head is cut off. What is happening? My easel's in the way. Okay. Um, so the gist of what our statement is, is that if this canvas could talk, it would tell us to share. And so, you know, our, our goal is to share everything, the good, the great, the bad, the ugly, the tears, the frustration, the joy, the, all of it. You know, this is a journey. It's a roller coaster, really. Like, don't you remember... 
I, it's been a while since I've been on a roller coaster, but don't you remember like you're super excited. You're like, yes, I'm going to do it. It looks so fun. And then you get in line. And then for me, the closer I get to the front of the line, the more that I'm like, this was a terrible idea. What am I doing? Why did I do this? And then, then like, there's the rush of like, okay, it's my turn. I can't turn back because everyone's going to be like, you chicken you know so you get on and then that thing clamps down you're like this was a terrible idea why yeah. did i do this and yeah. then you go up and the whole way up you're like nope nope dumb 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 and then you get to the top and then whoosh and then you want to do it again yeah well that's what today, art is like and uh, today we were going to talk about um what stops us from going in and painting the fears that you know get in the way when we're trying yes. to start painting and um so it's a perfect segue it is for the fear so um uh, i i was struggling i'm working on this big painting behind me like the first big painting that i've done and i think i've painted it over like five or six times it's like i keep painting over or i like where the water is now but i still want to work on the the where the land kind of is and give it a little bit more abstraction which i'm getting there but it's you know it's a process i'm learning how to paint large yes what brushes i need so for me it's been a little bit more of a struggle getting in and the minute i you know because i want to go in and paint on it but then that imposter syndrome comes in like oh i'm never going to make it work it's never going to work i'm not going to get there but i did I'm really happy with how the water turned out. So I'm halfway there because that's the main part of the painting. So now I just got to finish the rest. But, you know, what is it when you, what is, what stops you from going in your studio? Okay, so before I answer, I just wanted to say, so hi, Susan, and there's Barry. Hi, Barry. Hi, hi. hi, everyone. Okay, so while we're sharing our fears, I would love for you guys to comment, like, what are some fears that you have around your art journey um, that we could talk about as well? And maybe yeah. it might be the same ones that we have. I'm sure we all kind of have the same fears, right? But um, the biggest, the two biggest fears that I have that, that, that could stop me from going into the studio, um, specifically the going into the studio is one, the fear of that blank canvas. When I see it, I, I have this fear that I'm never going to be able to create, create, especially after I create something that I really love. And then I go to create again. I have this fear that I'm never going to be able to create like that again. Like it was a one and done. You're an imposter. It was a, it was a fluke. It was an accident. You're lucky that you got that one. So why are you standing in front of another one? Take your win and get out of the door. You know, that, that is how I feel. And, and so sometimes I'll set up the canvases and they'll be blank and they'll sit there for a day before I'll, I'll, I'll start procrastinating and doing other things because I'm afraid to go in and start them because what if they turn out like crap? Right. 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 But the other, the other side to that though, sometimes I think when I'm starting something new, it's kind of exciting because all the possibilities are there. Yes. But for sure, when you get to that middle point, which you know, where it's all crappy and you're thinking, yes. what the hell? I'm never going to get there. That's my, <laughs> my big fear that I'm just not good enough and I'm never going to make it happen. But ultimately, I think I do get there. But that's a big one that stops me from starting um, is just the thought that, I mean, I can start pretty easy, but I have a hard time in the middle and a hard time. Like, I know I need to come in and play with this, but I'm like, I'm halfway there. So I like, okay, well, if I, if I start working on this again, am I going to mess it up? Yes. yes. That's the next level of fear in the canvas for me too, is I get it to a place where I, I like it. It's looking good, but I also know in the deep part of my soul that I need to keep pushing it. I need to keep going. And then I'm afraid that I'm going to screw it up. And then, and I have, I mean, I've got three right now, four on my table, um, that I pushed past where I liked it and then they turned like poo and, <laughs> and I hate them now and so they're gonna have to be painted over and start again but what I've learned from that is that I had 
like six of them down or maybe 10. I don't know, depending on the size. I have a lot of them on the on the table to paint. So of the of them, over half of them turned out amazing. And then those are the ones that I pushed and they didn't. And so I guess that's okay. I still have some that I love, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. And I think when when you get like you're getting ready for your show, I think ultimately I think what people do that are more experienced than us, I think they paint and paint and paint and paint and paint and then they call it down to their absolute favorites. Yeah. So I yes. think it's okay that you have some throwaway paintings, ones that you don't love. You may look at them again in a week and really like them, or you may look at them in a week and paint over. But I think the more the more you have, then you can go through and just pick your favorites. Yes. So I think that's, that's not a bad thing to have too many. Um, but my other question was, I feel so much freer when I'm working in my sketchbook. Yes, of course, because you know that, that that's not going anywhere. You know what uh, I mean? Like that, your safe space of like, if you screw up, it's in your book, no one's going to see it, first of all. And it's not a canvas, right? right? So we we hold these canvases. I'm getting Precious. better at it now. Yeah. Because what has helped me with that is is to go buy as many canvases as you can afford, right? That's yeah. within your budget. But but buy a a, a, a bunch of them. And then have them so that that you don't when you just have one canvas or one or two, they're so precious yeah. that you you're like, I can't mess it up because it's the only one I have, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. And I don't know why we I feel that way about it, because, you know, you could paint over it. So why does it feel so precious? I think that's well, the big thing is letting go of what the result is going to be. And that's a struggle I think a lot of us have. Yeah, because you want it to turn I, out. You do. And I think that some of the preciousness comes from the fact that art supplies are super expensive. And I think that yeah. that's something that we should, you know, uh, I, I saw a quote one time that said, when art critics get together, they talk about, you know, the art and, and they, what, it, what it's about and the meaning of it and if it's good. And when artists get together, they talk about where you can find cheap art supplies. Right. <laughs> That's so true. That I, so it's true because so true. I you, just cracks me you, up. You have texted me several times when that Michaels has their buy one, get two free. Yeah. That's when I buy my canvases. Yes. Yeah. And you and having those me. extras takes yeah it takes away that feeling of like this canvas is precious no it's not because if I screw it up I've got five more over here I'll just set it aside and it also I think frees you from when it does mess up you don't have to immediately paint over it and then start again because right. like you said sometimes right. if you Let's leave see. it and you move on to something else you can come back and see it and you're like oh but i really like this part so if i just get rid of and you can start to rework it in a different way you yeah. know and if you only have one painting and you don't like it you have to paint over it to start again and so it it kind of takes that away yeah, so what I'm going to focus on is trying to get that feeling before I start a canvas or when I'm working on the, that feeling that I have when I'm working in my sketchbook that is just free yes. and fun. And I'm going to try to bring that forward when I'm working on the canvas. Because, and even when I get to that crappy stage, I'm going to try to just well, keep going. And living proof of that for you is is the I don't know if anyone on here saw uh, earlier this week I did the post of that you were working in your sketchbook and you did a painting and it was even just the first layer and you okay. showed it to me and I was like I want that like, yeah the That's freedom right. that you had in it was that you created this this piece that I could totally it, I could see the freedom in it and I loved it and I'm like give it to me I want it and so you sent it to me I have it I'm waiting on the frame I'm going to put it up but transferring that over onto the canvas is really for you going to just be um, look at your face right now look at your smile like you just light up with that I think that in the conversations that you and I have had you know privately for both of us we're craving that freedom. Yes. We're just, we know yes. that, we know that that freedom sets us free, like literally. And we know that it's there. We're just on the cusp of it. And it's like just pushing and, and doing it. 
and, and, and not, not letting fear win. Yeah, not being afraid of how it's going to turn out. And not yes. being afraid that you have to have it look a certain way. And know that you can go back into it. You can paint over it. Oh, Jody said, Michaels also sells in bulk. So yes, they do. The they do. Like. I've done that. Oh, yep. Okay. You can get packs of like six uh, canvas and packs of 12. Is that what you're talking about, Jody? And so I've done that when you need canvases, when they're not on the, you know, buy one, get two or oh, the 70% so off. You can, it's like can, uh, Michael's Pro oh. is what it's called. Oh. Okay, good to know. I didn't know about that because yeah. I only buy them. I only buy them when they're go when they have that sale. Yeah, and they're and they're they're really in inexpensive when you buy them like that. She said yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that point. That that's good to bring up. So then you can get those multiples and have you know even if they're small. I mean, nobody's saying that you know if you're if you really have that fear you don't have to start with a giant canvas you true, know true. but speaking of that i have a commission coming up and i know we talk about commissions all the time <laughs> and we keep saying we're not going to do commissions but yeah we keep taking i have two commissions right now the painting behind you is a commission like commissions i just don't know that we can get away from them and i'm going to just start to try to embrace them yeah. but i'm doing a commission for a 30 by 60 which is a wow. size I've never done yeah and I had to special order it right and so I decided to order two because I knew right. that if I only had that one I want to work on them both at the same time right so that I'm freer and I'm not so tight of like oh my god I had to special this canvas has to come by freight so talk yeah. about special yeah. like you know yeah, so don't think about that when you start. I know, I know. <laughs> it totally is. And I, I just have to do what we you were just saying, which is yeah. release it all and know that ultimately I can paint over it. But yeah. it's hard. It's, it's really something hard. I think we all, all struggle with. Like, Jody, but, do you struggle with that too? You can answer on the thing when you come back. But Yeah, but Jody King also says when you're working on two, you do the one that you think is going to be the one for your client and then you work on another one she says nine times out of ten the client likes the freer one versus the one you were trying to do for them that's what i'm going to do then that's yes. totally what i'm going to do because well yeah because one of the things that I think with commissions, and this is a sidebar on it, but it's still the, that fear of commission. That's another fear is taking on a commission because people, when they when they hire you to make a painting, they have an expectation. We think they have an expectation, and sometimes they do, of what they want you to do for them, right? And now we're trying to live up to that expectation. Um, I don't even know where I was going because in uh, our minds, I'm, but it's what we what we perceive as their expectations. But really, they like your art, yes. because of what you've done. So you've got to get out of yes. your own head. Yes, and, and that's why I think that that's exactly what I was trying to say. We are <laughs> yes, we're so in sync now. I think that when the reason that they like the one that you do that you don't think is going to be the one they pick is because that's actually what they're attracted to to begin with and we get so caught up in trying to please them that we forget that they're already pleased right. they just want us to do what we do for them right yeah right right so other than the colors you should be able to do what you want to do yeah yeah and then they just accept it yeah yeah and i will tell you that one of my mentors that i take classes from um yann she does three paintings for a okay. commission and then she gives them a choice okay. and recently she did three and they didn't like any of them they didn't pick any oh. and that was really like that's inspiring we're afraid to me. Of. But that's, that's what, what we're, we're afraid, afraid of. of. That's right. what we're afraid of. But it happened to her. And now she's in galleries, multiple galleries. She's done huge pieces of art for hospitals. And I mean, she is a very, very, very established artist. Not only in the fact that she's selling, but she's also very established in her a style and how she does things and here she is it happened to her and guess what she survived okay nothing, nothing you know yeah, what happened? and she also 
They came back though, they circled back and they were like, well, could you just change this one piece of this one? And then they ended up coming back and taking one of the three that she tweets. Oh. But the point of that is that nothing is going to happen to us if they don't pick it, if they don't like it, we just start again. Right, right, right. The things right. that we have are very unfounded. Yeah. Honestly, if we start to unpack them, they're, yes. they're, they're, they're ridiculous sometimes. But I do think we, going back to the fear part, the fear part of doing commissions, I think we have to set up the parameters around what's comfortable for you. Yeah. So yes. if you say, okay, give me the size that you want and the colors that you want, then that's it. Then you can do those three paintings and they have to pick from those three. Like you can put that as a parameter. Right. So, you know, I'm going to do this size for you and I'm going to do these colors, but then you pick from these three and that's it. Yeah. That, like that's their choice. Yeah. Like if you set that limit on it, I think, you know, and I'm sure Wyann did that. She probably is just being nice and, you know, doing a little tweak in for them just because, and that's probably what sure. all of us would do. I mean, yeah. 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 Because I, that. even if you say that you're going to put those parameters on, ultimately you still want to just make them yeah. happy. You so you're going to, you're going to accommodate them. So like we try to be hard and like, this is the line, you know, <laughs> but, but we're also people pleasers. And so yeah. you just, which is why we keep doing commissions, even though they are like stressful and and well, because we're trying to please them. But well, and it's complimentary because they love it and they want it. I think if they want it like a certain size that maybe you don't have, but yeah, it gets it get it's so hard. It's so hard for them. It's so hard to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. So what's um, another fear that you have that that you, that you feel like holds you back in your business? Not just maybe not in, in any aspect of the business, in painting and showing and selling and like what's something that you have that you okay. off the top of your head? Well, this is also something I'm struggling with too. Is um, allowing the time that it's going to take for my art to sell and sell consistently. It does sell, um, but it's not consistent. So being patient and not giving up. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I still have to work part-time. I still have to, you know, support myself. So for me, it's, it takes a lot of energy and it's a lot of effort. Although when I am painting, I get such, like, joy and it's just something I love, right? So it makes me happy. So I do it for that reason alone. But being patient with myself to say, okay, well, when is this going to start taking, when is this going to happen? Because you hear experts always say that there are customers that are going to like what you do. It's just a matter of finding them, right? Yes. Like yes. there's plenty of, there's plenty of art buyers out there. There's plenty, there's, there's abundance everywhere. And you hear people talking about that all the time, but in reality, you know, is it five years that I have to wait? Is it three years that it's going to, I mean, I'm on year two, mm -hmm. so it hasn't been very mm -hmm. long. So, right. but some people take off really fast, or at least you perceive them to be taking off really fast. You don't know if that's true or not. Right. Um, because it's your perception of what they're posting and stuff. Um, so it's being patient. I do have one mentor that has been saying, you know, give it three years, give it three to four years. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep trying. It takes a while to build up those followers and those customers. So for me, the fear is I go back to that imposter. So do I give, you know, am I not good enough? Is it never going to happen? You know, I only have so much storage space so I can paint for myself, but then where do I store everything? Right. And so that's part of the reason also for selling is that you can paint and then you can sell it. And then, you know, you keep the, cause I just have so much space. I don't have enough space to, you know, store a million paintings. Right. Um, so that, that's a big fear. That's a big fear of mine. Like I can understand enough, that and not giving up and keep going and just keep like I've started and stopped painting. I haven't started. I haven't done painting to make it a business in my past. I've only just painted just like I've painted for a little while and then my job would get caught up and I, you know, wouldn't have the energy and then I wouldn't do it. 
and then I would come back to it and stop and start. And so it was when the pandemic and getting laid off from my job is the one that catapulted me into saying, I keep talking about doing this and I'm not doing it. So I have no excuse anymore. I've got to do it. So I've started and now it's just a matter of keeping up that courage. Don't, not giving up, just keep going, not expecting a certain expectation or a certain timeline. Yes, because all the timelines are different and squirrel moment. Can we just all agree on here that Guinness, your bird Guinness is like <laughs> our third, it's like our third, um, um, um yes. Host. Yes. <laughs> I just, I mean, he is so happy today. He is going. I love it. I just love when he starts singing. Is it sunny there? Is yeah. that what's happening? Yeah. yeah. So he's like, yay. <laughs> yeah. He's, a happy he's so, so beautiful. Oh my gosh. One day you're going to have to show us what he looks like. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I totally understand that. And for me, that fear also includes um, the monetary part of it, like the money that, you know, I'm investing into this business to get it off the ground and running. And then, I mean, I, I as I get closer to doing this booth, you know, it, 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 the money that we keep putting into all these little things that you, you know, to make it great to do all this. And, and we're having fun with that, but it is still money that we're spending. And then, and then that pressure starts to come of like, okay, so, we're spending all this money. What are we going to get out of it? Like, is anything going to come out of it? What if we do all of this and, and, and it's like zero, like, you know, and then we are trying to set, set expectations, lower the expectations yeah. and remember that it ultimately it's all about the joy, right? So it's about the joy of submitting and getting in. It's about the joy of, of setting it all up and seeing it in the booth and being at the booth and talking to people. And, and it doesn't matter about the sales, yeah. but ultimately it does matter about the sales. When you're putting time and energy and money into something like you can say that all you want. And yes, it is ultimately about the joy, but some money has to come back in so that you can continue right. moving forward and make more art. Right. right? So that, that's a fear as well. So it's a yeah. fear of getting started it's a fear of being started yep. it's a fear of success it's there's there's so many levels of fear that is constantly coming in and bombarding us that as an artist and i think that this this happened to me in my previous career that was in sales as well in cosmetic sales sales in general is nerve-wracking i mean yeah. it just is because you have to be vulnerable yeah. and in my previous career i didn't make the cosmetics you know, I, I, I didn't, uh, it wasn't as personal, you know, to sell that when you are making the art, uh -huh. you, the fear is like, if it's not selling, then you start to go into like what you were saying, yeah. am I not good enough? Right. And once you start going into that fear yeah. level, yeah. it's a spiral that can be hard to come out of. Right. And then you quit. So yeah. I know that I know deep down in my soul not to quit, to keep going, take baby steps every day, do something towards your goal. And ultimately, just by doing that, you will get there. And just the thing that I fight with that I have to is don't put the expectation on time. Like you have to have it done. If in a year you're not selling your art, that's the stuff that gets you into that spiral where it makes you want to quit. So don't, I know deep down in my soul and I hear it from a lot of experts, people that have been in the business a lot longer than us mm -hmm. to not give up. So that's what I'm counting on and that's what I'm doing. Okay. So one of my favorite quotes is success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. That's it that's what we have to do as artists yes that's you have to go from failure is. to failure without losing the enthusiasm and then when you do have the wins you we've got we it is imperative that we take the small wins yeah. i mean we were laughing yesterday because um 
I told you that uh, we bought little, we had little sweatshirts oh. made for the booth that I'm doing. Oh yeah, we'll come back to that. Yeah. So we did little t-shirts and sweatshirts and all this. And I said that when we get there and we do the booth, the, the experienced artists or the more seasoned artists that are there are literally going to be rolling their eyes at us going, oh, look how cute. It's her first booth. She's super excited. <laughs> I don't want to lose that excitement. Like, no. what's the point of doing it long term if at some point you lose that excitement for the small wins? Yeah. You know, and for me, this is a huge win because two years ago, I didn't even paint. I've never painted in my life. Yeah. So to be now in a booth, it's like, I'm going to take that win. And I don't care if you look at me weird because we're in the booth doing a dance. Right. Because right. come in this booth and dance with me. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. And that's going to to be effective i know people are going to just be gravitated towards your your space it's going to be beautiful Thank i know it will be thank you i'm but very I have excited to tell you so when um terry was saying that she wanted my little sketchbook painting so she i sent her the sketchbook painting she sent me and i'm opening <laughs> she sent me and i will open it with you guys i'm so excited um so this is the little celebrations that we're talking about to get rid of the fears. <laughs> so wins. Oh, we got to celebrate. God. This All is the, the way. Cutest. Okay, guys. Look at, talk about enthusiasm. Look at how cute this t-shirt is, this tank. Oh, it's reversed. <laughs> I don't know how to flip it. It's okay. It. You can see it. Isn't that I love it. Cute? Oh, is my it gosh. Here. Sparkly? Now, it's so comes, sparkly in person. This comes, this comes from her sales background. So when she wears this cute little tee in her booth, she's going to be all professional and cute looking. Yeah. So you yeah. guys think about doing that. If you guys do a fair or something, make t-shirts for yourself because that is super cute. Thank Good sales. Thank you. Sales. Thank Good sales. Yeah. <laughs> thank so, you. So yes, friends. marketing, marketing uh, for, for, for sales like that is in my blood from what I did before. And so it's all about perception right and so um how, how you perceive and 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 actually Jeanette you and I have talked about this when I was when I was really struggling with the next fear of pricing your art yeah and yep. and having to come to a realization of like well what do I feel like my art is worth and does that mean that that's what I'm worth and all of those fears that go with pricing it and selling it but it is all perception and I think that um, I, I did a video about this, but I haven't posted it in my feed yet, but I will soon. I was talking about how when you make enough art, and I'm just getting to this place, right? So I, I've heard of this before, but I had yet to experience it myself, and I just did, which is that when you make enough art and you finally start to get the courage and the, and the skill to start making the art that you really want to make and you're not copying someone else for technique, yeah. then you start to feel more confident and then your perception of your art and the joy that you have around your art makes your perception change, which then makes you other people other people's perception change. You have to love your art and feel confident about it first in order for others to get on the bandwagon to join it. So creating that perception of um, that you, you, you love it, you are proud of it, you don't care what anyone else thinks makes, I think makes others go, huh, yeah, she loves that a lot. I should pay attention. Yeah, well, the energy, I think there's a lot of energy that goes in around art. And I wanted to say hi to some people that are on, Patty. Yeah. S, S, Stritch, Cat and Crow, Cat and the Crow, Art by Faye, Schofield, Jody, Kincaid, Daniello, and Susan G. Berry, B. McCafferty. Oh my gosh, hey, thanks you guys. Art by Faith. Yeah. Go, Phil. Thanks Thank you for, for joining us. And, listening um, to our rambling about fear. <laughs> well, we're hoping we're hoping it helps us talking about this stuff. And um and our big subject today was the fear of, of what stops you from painting, you know, all those things that we've talked about. Um, pricing is another thing that, you know, that you talked about, you know, you're afraid to price too high. You don't want to price too low, but I yes. think, um, again, Jody Kings talks about doing, um, a comps like you do with real estate where you go around and you kind of 
kind of see what a person has charged who's been out there for a long time versus someone who's just starting with a similar type of art as you, that's a good place to start. But I do believe at exactly what you said, that if you don't love the art yourself and you're just trying to do art that you think will sell, that's not going to work. That's never right. going to work. You have to love what you do because only what you do is, is again, you're creating something from nothing. Yeah. That canvas is blank. Nothing was there. You made that happen. So there's a piece of you that goes into that art. So until you're happy with that, that energy is going to translate. I don't know how it works, but it does translate through social media, through your posting. It gets out there. People that buy your art, then they send, send and talk it to, about it to your, their friends. That energy is there. So you, yeah. can't, you can't fake it. You have to have, as Jodi King, I keep quoting her, but as she says, honest art. You have to have that honest yes. art. It's got to come from you. Yeah. And when you're happy, and it does take practice, like I feel like I have to keep painting. I'm not there yet. I'm getting there, but I'm not there yet. I don't feel like I've painted enough yet. So every right. time I, I paint a grouping or I do another, I like it better, and I like it better, yes. and I like it yes. better. Yeah. So I got to just keep going because I know what you're talking about when you get to that point where you love what you're doing and then automatically it just starts. I'm sure there's transitions that you go through too. Like even in an established artist, if they feel a call to do it a different way, they're going to go course. through a transition yeah. and a struggle. Yeah. Well, and I, yeah, because you're adding in at that point, you're adding in different techniques to your, to your core style. Right. But I wanted to, to, to just say about the selling and the pricing is that um, I think that what, what helped me a lot was in the beginning, I didn't know any better. Like, you know, sometimes you just don't know and you just do. And the more that you know, then you start to like start to follow the rules that, you know, like, that are set up and the, and the things that are the guidance that's the given guidance. to you and you start to get into all of that. Right. Yeah. But when I first was starting, I mean, I didn't know where to sell, but of course or where to price, but I priced low and we've, and so we've, you know, but slowly I've been getting higher and higher, but I think that when you're beginning, it's okay to sell lower because you need those sales for that win and that confidence that comes from those wins, right? So yes, sure. when you sell your first pieces, you know darn good and well that you're not getting really paid. But if you sell it enough to get more supplies, yeah. and then you can buy more supplies and and create more art, which you're going to get better. Yeah. But you also have that win of like somebody, even if it's $10, and I'm not saying to sell it for that cheap, but just 10 is an easy number in my head. Yeah. But even if it's for $10, it's like, I always look at it as that is somebody who had to work and do something to get that money. And they were willing to give it to me to have something that I created in their home. That feeling builds your confidence very quickly. So sell it for what you feel comfortable with in the beginning. And then as you start to create more, and as you started to see my art evolve, you were like, Terry, you need to start selling more. And I'm still scared. Like how tight was I? I'm like, no, I can't charge more. Like I just, my brain hadn't caught up to my skill level yet, you yeah. know? And so you'll, you'll get there. And that's why it's important to have a friend that's always pulling you, <laughs> you know, like pulling you, we pull each other up. We, you know, we lift each other. Well, um, I do feel like, and the only reason why, because I've been mentored by another mentor that is very adamant about that, not undervaluing original art, because now you can have prints and you can do stuff. So you don't want to undervalue that original piece of art. Again, something that was created from nothing that didn't exist before you made it. So that, that can't be undervalued. Um, pricing to where it sells is, is a awesome way to start. And one indication that people can know who's listening, if, if they haven't heard this before, is that when your art starts to sell at that price, 
and you're having, you know, you're keeping up and you're selling a lot, then that's when you raise the price because you know, you know, and so you can slowly gain and, you know, the prices are only going up. They're never going to go down. Yeah. So it, it's yeah. best to, you know, you can start slow. Um, but just remember, it is something that was not in existence before you created it. So yeah. you just don't want to undervalue that. And you can offer prints, which is what we're both doing now. Yes. Yes. So that's a, actually, we could talk about that next week if you want. Yeah. Um, let's or do we can look at our list of things. No, yeah. But we're let's both in that prints. process of, of figuring that out and, um, and, and getting it going. Yeah. So that's something that... And that that actually that took away that fear. You you were the on the forefront of the prints and and getting it going. And I was watching you and listening to you talk about it. And 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 it took me a minute to wrap my head around. But once I did, I could see that that really being able to offer prints really does change how you feel about the price of your original art. And so that's something we can talk about next week. That's a yeah. Perfect perfect okay well then how long have we been on right now i think it goes faster than we I think know. so i don't know okay well Is let's it? let's see well so what how would we sum how would we sum this conversation up would you say feel the fear and just do it anyway the fear is going <laughs> to yeah. be there no matter what it's going to be there no matter what so just yeah. feel it embrace it and be like i'm feeling fear right now but you know what i'm not going to let it stop me i'm going to push through and do what is the what is the next smallest step that i yeah. can do Baby through steps. this fear Baby yes steps so that you still are working towards your goal no matter what and then for me and i'm i'm saying this but i'm really saying it to myself to coach myself don't give up just keep no. taking those baby steps and do something every day towards what you love and you'll get there. I believe that. Absolutely. I believe it. Even though, you know, I want it to be faster. <laughs> and, and who does it, right. you know? So, but, but, but don't wish away the journey no. because, no. because no. the journey is the best part. It really, really is because you just, it, I get it just is. And get together with the friends or other artists because that just creating with other people is super fun. And yeah. that gives you a jolt of energy. So do that too. Absolutely. Well, I think this was good. Hopefully it help was helpful to you guys that are watching us. I I hope so too. If it was, or if you like, give us some feedback because we've been, we're on 19 now. Right. And so yeah. we just, we'd love some feedback. So comment, let us know if, if anything resonated with you or what your fears are. Maybe we didn't hit it yeah. and we can come back to it. I got my paper. I can write a list of like things. So for next time. Yeah. Or any ideas of stuff that you want to yeah. know about. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll Absolutely. find out. And you yes, guys yep. just be on the journey with us, getting going, getting doing this art thing. 100%. Okay. Hey, all right, girly. Well, I guess we'll stop there. And then next week we have a good subject to talk about with prints. Yeah. And what we're both doing in that, in that arena. Okay. Okay. Stop all right. Plan. Okay. Bye, Until everybody. Next week, we'll be, um, everybody, it's two weeks. Um, we'll be on again in two weeks. And then we'll, um, we'll have a guest again on in May. Yeah. So next week, it'll just be Terry and I again, and then we'll have a guest in May. So it's every two weeks. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.